we are working on exercise four, chemical aspects. And we're on assignment three, which is under the section acids, bases, and pH. So here we have a series of household chemicals that you might come into contact with in your everyday life. We have aftershave, Alka-Seltzer, vinegar, ammonia, and detergent. And what we're going to do is test the pH of each of these with pH paper. Now, if you have never used this substance before in the lab, it arrives as little strips of this papery material. And you just tear off a section to use for each part of your experiment. So I think we got a big enough piece for the aftershave. There we go. And there's a color, color comparator on the side of the bottle that the strips come in. And you need to color match very quickly after you have taken the liquid and placed it on the paper because the paper will change color over time as it dries out or disintegrates the paper. So first things first, we have the aftershave. All right, that aftershave appears to have turned the paper a bright yellow color. That seems to correspond with a pH of seven. Next, we have our Alka-Seltzer. Very foamy. Place a few drops on the paper. I'd say that that's somewhere between a six and a seven. So we'll call that six and a half. Then we have detergent. That is fairly dark. I would say that that is somewhere between the 10 and the 11 in color. So I'll call that 10 and a half. Next, we have ammonia. That is a vivid blue. That appears to be a 12. And then lastly, we have our vinegar. That looks like a match for the four. So we have aftershave at a pH of seven. We have Alka-Seltzer at a pH of six and a half. We have detergent at a pH of 10 and a half. We have ammonia at a pH of 12. And we have vinegar at a pH of four. 
and we are starting on step three. Investigate the effect of a buffer on pH as follows. Place 25 milliliters of distilled water, which has a pH of seven, and buffer solution, which also has a pH of seven in separate labeled beakers. So here we have our two beakers and I'm labeling them by just putting them on this sheet of paper with the writing. I have my container of distilled water. I'm going to measure 25 milliliters. I'll move this out of the way. A little bit more. Okay, that's exactly 25 milliliters. I will pour it into this beaker. And next, I have the pH 7 buffer. I guess I should turn things this way, shouldn't I? I'm going to give it just a little bit of a shake, just in case anything has settled. I'm going to pour. 25 milliliters into this beaker. Next, it says to add six drops. Oh, measure and record the pH of each. Okay, grab our pH paper. We are just verifying that both of these actually have a pH at or near seven. All right, pretty much no color change there. So that's going to be about a seven. And the buffer. This one's a bright yellow, so that is definitely seven. So we'll take six drops of bromothymol blue and add it to each beaker. Right. Six drops in each one. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Mix by swirling the liquid. So the next step is to place the beaker of distilled water and bromothymol blue on a piece of white paper, already done that, and add 1% hydrochloric acid drop by drop and mix thoroughly by swirling the liquid between each drop. Count and record the number of drops required to turn the solution pale yellow, which indicates a pH of six. So it's kind of difficult for you to see in this lighting on this camera that this is actually blue until I turn it, then you can kind of see. The buffer has a bit of a greenish color 
um, that's not necessarily from the bromothymol blue. It's uh, the buffer is not pure clear. It has some color to it. All right, so I have my hydrochloric acid and I'm wearing gloves because you don't really wanna get this on you. At this concentration, it's probably not that dangerous, but better safe than sorry. That was one drop. And it's a lot lighter, but it is still a little bit blue. That's a second drop. That is definitely no longer blue anymore. So that took two drops. Use the preceding method to determine the number of drops of 1% hydrochloric acid required to lower the buffer solution from pH 7 to pH 6. So this one took two drops. Now we shall see how many it takes to change the pH of the buffer solution. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Fifty. Sixty, seventy, eighty, ninety, one hundred. As you can see, we've placed a hundred drops in here, and it's only just now beginning to clear up from the blue color. So this took two drops, and this took one hundred drops. And this should be enough information for you to be able to complete 3D on the lab report.